So um, I've been helping quite a few new institutions recently. Um, and as we train people to do different things, um, I assign them tasks. And I kind of feel like this maybe for old timers or even some newer people, um, it's not clear where all this information comes from. So I wanted to take a minute to look at this database roles in internal settings. Um, whenever somebody says, oh, I need to edit agents or I need to edit taxonomy and you're going to assign them one of these roles um, in managing their operator profile, you should try to make sure that they understand the required reading and potentially the text documents too, because this helps people understand you know, what we're allowing them to do and how they may or may not affect other collections. So uh, this is a really short demo because I just wanted to point this out to everybody that if you are assigning people permissions before you assign them, you should ask them to at least read these documents um, and think about how they uh, might be affecting anybody else in Arctos's data. Questions? I'll make a comment here. Um, so at the MVZ, I'm the person who usually uh, grants all the permissions for all the students, new students coming in. We have uh, new folks coming in and out of roles uh, all the time. And uh, I always email them back with their supervisor CC'd and I send them the direct links to the uh, documents and the handbook uh, pages, the relevant handbook pages, you know, with, um, so they have it handy in the email, uh, but also with the caveat that they need to be, you know, they can't, they should not do anything in Arctos without training from their supervisor. But I think having the pages uh, link, the handbook pages is really helpful. Um, and I've had a lot of training of new students uh, uh, this last couple of weeks and, um, so I'm constantly referring back to the handbook pages, but they have it in their emails. So uh, that's always uh, a good thing. And actually one, one student has actually read all the documentation links too, which is usually a lot drier and boring than the handbook pages um, because it's documentation. So uh, um, it, it's, it's pretty useful. Um, and I think we should keep, uh, uh, you know, kind of those best practices. I also really appreciate you guys adding in the uh, video links because I actually hadn't seen those originally. Uh, I think those are added to the table more recently. Uh, so I've been also um, sending them where, you know, um, necessary video links, which actually some of the, I think some of the students that they just really rely on the video links. Um, I know that a lot of those are outdated, and so I kind of give them a warning about that, but it gets them the idea. So I just tell them like the, the actual page may look slightly different, but the tools are I uh, are generally the same. Beth, you got your hand up? Yeah, just um, double checking for those of us old timers who went through, as you said, we went through the weird process uh, Teresa, um, this is the same really helpful super duper info that when you're onboarding a collection now comes up in the uh, issue, right? Mm -hmm. With the nice little check boxes and stuff. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. Because um, onboarding collections, you know, like the first thing is they need to manage agents. So I direct them to the documentation that's linked in here. Um, and I ask them to at least acknowledge that they've read it and understand it. So um, I don't know if they did or not because there's not a test, but I assume people are doing the right thing. Um, and once they do that, then I grant them the permission. And we have a request from Angela to please show how to get to this table again, Teresa. Oh, it's in the tools directory and the internal settings database roles right here. It's also linked. Oh, I think on it's linked the, in the agenda 
Yeah, the, it's also linked when you're uh, op, uh, in a, managing uh, operators. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're managing the operator. So it's one of the links that says, you know, read this first. Yeah, I think if you if you uh, go to operator manage. No, there's nothing there. No, no, no. Go, go. Maybe go, after you find somebody. Yeah, you, yeah. When you're actually editing a specific operator, there you go. Um, then scroll down. Keep scrolling. There you go. This. Oh yeah, this one. this guy right yeah. here. Yeah. Uh huh. That's it. So I refer to this all the time too. Yeah. Yeah. So lots of ways to get here, and um, I just wanted to kind of share it because I feel like uh, it's a good reminder um, if you're bringing in new people to do work or whatever, that this is the place to, oh, to one figure more tip. out what they should be assigned. Yeah, one more tip. Uh, we've had also a bunch of summer volunteers. So we're not giving them like necessarily uh, uh, management roles. Uh, so they're not really editing things directly, but they do need access to a lot of the tools that show up um, after you do a query. So, uh, if you want them to see things like, you know, summarize or share it, uh, um, share a um, a search parameterized URL, then uh, make them create an operator account and just give them Cold Fusion user access, and then that pretty much takes care of that. Um, so that's been really helpful uh, for some of our. Um, volunteers uh and they just want to be able to like i said I, we make them do a bunch of you know research and queries and and checking this and that and then they can share a url that uh for what they've either fixed or problems that they found um and if they graduate to you know editing actually specimen things then it's just easy to go ahead and change that 